so bad. Praise the Lord. Can we all stand and get our service opened up? Amen. Invite the Lord in. Hallelujah.
always do that. We're trying to get a get drink. Oh, we're having time for these instruments tonight. But God's good anyhow. Amen. Up on the ice bound
brother. Brother Morris, I'd like you to come up here, son. Would you do that? Brother Morris can come on up here. Just recently. Aski Amuku, Aski Kakamuka, Aki Asali Amuku. Is he Kamuku Lakari Kalaki Muku? Because he are not the Yaraka Gumuku. Aski Amuku, Aska Kamuka, Aski Kamuku, Askali Amokalaki Scali. Aski Kamuka, Yaka Kumuki, Yako. I, the Lord, am in the midst of thee, and I see and I hear, and I know and I hear thy cry in the night. And I know the path that thou takest, and I know thy pain, and thy suffering, and I know uh, that thy, thy life is, is void and in need of me. And behold, I see thee, and I hear thee, and I speak to thee now. Uh, just receive of me, for I have to give unto thee, and I know how to give good gifts to my children. Just receive of my hand. Now, doubt us not in thy heart, but believe and receive of the Lord, for I, the Lord, uh, is he that speaketh unto thee. <laughs> I, the Lord, am in the midst of thee, and I see and I hear, and I know and I hear thy cry in the night, and I know the path that thou takest, and I know thy pain and thy suffering, and I know uh, that thy, thy life is, is void and in need of me. And behold, I see thee, and I hear thee, and I speak to thee now. Uh, just receive of me, for I have to give unto thee, and I know how to give good gifts to my children. Just receive of my hand. Now, doubt us not in thy heart, but believe and receive of the Lord. For I, the Lord, is he that speaketh unto thee. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord.
experience with God that if he hadn't moved in so many miraculous ways, that there would have been a time when I could have just said, I, I quit. Anybody know what I'm talking sure. about? Sure. I mean, I just quit. I give up. But you know what? Uh, where could I go? Where are you going to go? And then I look back on it now, and I, I thank God that uh, uh, I went through some things. Something with him. Because I've learned uh, not to disobey. I've learned that if I do, that I'm going to get a whooping. I did in trouble. I did in trouble. I do did Brother Louie mentioned this morning, uh, I believe it was in Leviticus, about... Uh, how that if you do something and you don't know it's wrong, you know, that you don't hold you accountable. But I read in the New Bible, in the New Testament, where it said if you know and do things worthy of stripes, that you'll be beaten with many, with many stripes. stripes. But if you don't know and you do, view. I like the view. I like to claim ignorance, you know. The Lord, I've never been there before. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've never sure. been there before. Yes, I raised my loopholes. family. We're looking for loopholes. I raised my family. I said, now, Lord, I've never been here before. I've never been tonight where I'm at right now before. That's right. This is the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to know that Jesus said, I'll never leave you. Nor forsake you, but I'll be with you even to the ends of the world. And so I'm going to sing a song I heard up in uh, Indianapolis. And, and I, I just loved it. And the man that sang it, he really did a good job. And give me a key of G and it's come on now. <coughs> you can do that. You can do that. Do that. Oh, come on now.
that's how the devil lies, you know. And and uh, and you know, he he went down to the altar and God filled him with the Holy Ghost and and he. Uh, no, well, we didn't fill him with the Holy Ghost. He went down and he gave his heart to the Lord and got out in the parking lot. And that was a he, he didn't get nothing. He didn't get anything. So he went back the next time and and prayed again. I mean, prayed, said, thought the thing got out in the parking lot. The devil said, You didn't get nothing. He kept going. Finally, one night he got filled with the Holy Ghost. And the devil said, You didn't get nothing. Yeah. He, he's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. You can take it. He, he, he can be up, though, do you get it? Yeah. The words are don't know what to say. That's for sure. But they, <laughs> that's true. Thank you. But I man, I'm just blown away by by what you all did for us. I, that's just man, that's incredible. That that if you hear a if you hear the uh, earth rumbling after a while, it's not a quake, it's Julie, because when I tell her what she will she will shout, I'm sure. Amen. Amen. That's that's how I got to this part of the country was my wife. She's from Martinsville. As a matter of fact, she graduated from high school here in 1984, I think it was, class of 84. Just a kid. So just a kid. She's still just a kid. Amen. I, I don't know what I was doing in 84. Probably something I shouldn't have been doing. You have your Bible. I just want to use this for a springboard scripture. I, we, I'm going to talk about some things tonight that, that I've talked about before here, but I want to do it in a little different avenue. Go with me to 3rd John. The 3rd third, third John. You know what? I am convinced that no matter what, how we live our lives and what all we encounter in life, I'm convinced that God wants us to come out on top. I'm convinced that He wants us to be victorious. I'm convinced He wants us to be successful. But you cannot measure your amount of victory and your amount of success by somebody else. No, you can't. One of the problems that we have in the Christian world is we often we often guide our lives or measure our lives by other saints, and you can't do that because some folk can get by with some things and other folk can't. No, they can't. Right. They, they just can't. I mean, some folk esteem one day higher than the other, and some folk esteem every day high. You we talked about that in Sunday school. Did you? And, and, and you just so so. There, there's no way of you gauging your walk with God with somebody else. But you can gauge your walk with God according to the Word of God. Amen. And that's the gauge that we have. And I found I have found out in the Word, contrary to what some people believe, God does want you to have the best. Sure yes. Amen. Yeah, he does not want you to go through life poor and wretched and down and weak and low. No, no, he doesn't. That may happen, but that's not his plan. That's not his will. That's not the way he wants it done. I've heard some people say, yeah, but the, the Bible says the poor you'll have with you always. And Jesus said it. I said, yeah, but it doesn't have to be you. Let it be somebody else. Why it got to be you? Amen. Right. He didn't say your name in there had to be poor. Some folk are going to have poor. Because you know what? Some folk have poor ways. That's Come right. Amen. Some, have, some people have a poor way of thinking. Oh, Jesus. Hmm? Doing good every they're, while. They're, <laughs> well, I guess I'll just leave it alone. Yeah, here. <laughs> John 3, verse number 2, a familiar scripture. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Now, actually, uh, this letter uh, was written and given to Gaius to take on a trip uh, uh, so that uh, uh, John could relay a message. But in this message, John was wishing that the carrier of the letter would have a safe journey. That's literally what this passage means. Have a safe journey or have a successful journey but it also relates over into the realm of the spirit god wants us to have a safe successful journey yeah. and how many know if your journey is successful it means you end up where you're supposed to end Amen. up Amen. 
Yeah. Amen. Yes, it's not successful if you don't end up where you're supposed to end up. Now we may take a lot of different roads trying to get there. It does happen, yeah. But 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 the key is getting there. Yeah. Now you're not going to get deep. You're not going to get to Detroit by getting out here on 65 and hitting south. No, you're not. It ain't gonna happen. No. Somewhere along the line, if Detroit's your destination, you're gonna have to turn around and head south, head north. Head north. Well, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. You're not gonna get to California by getting out here on Interstate 70 and heading east. Nope. You're not gonna get there. Not headed that way. Nope. But if someone can get a hold of you and say, whoa, wait a minute. If you're traveling to California, this is the route you need to take. That's what we preachers are trying to do. We're not against the way you're traveling. We're just trying to get you where you need to get. Amen. 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 And how many know there's an easier way to get there? Amen. Now, Absolutely. we go through town and I, I get, uh, uh, I don't know about you, about you other men, but, but, but when my wife is driving the car, it's best to say nothing. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And my wife drives in the middle of the road. Amen. Now, 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 if you think I'm lying to you, ask my son. My wife drives in the middle of the road. And if she's on a curvy road and the curve goes around to the left, she's all the way down in the left lane. And I'll say, Julie, why are you driving in the middle of the road for? She'll say, because I can't. <laughs> so far. And I'm like, what are you going to do if someone comes over a little hill? Ain't no one come over Chad, is there? <laughs> she say, I've been driving all these years and I ain't had a wreck yet, have I? Amen. No, you're not had a wreck, but you're wrecking me. <laughs> I'm nervous every time. You... She said, I always get you there, don't I? Well, yeah. I can't argue with that. Yeah. But she likes to take what she calls shortcuts. <laughs> and I'm like, why are you going this way? Well, I'm avoiding that stoplight. Go have to have to stop at 14 stop signs to to avoid, avoid two stoplights. Stop <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. My little finite mind tells me that the that the quickest way and the shortest route between two places is straight. What you got to be doing over here and over there and up there and over here and over there. But the idea is, she says, I get there. Well, I guess that's the way some of us do. Some of us got to go. Tim Agee always accused me of when he'd drive with me, he'd say, why are you going sightseeing tours? And I guess some of us go on sightseeing tours. But at least we get there. That, 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 that's the key. But I want to I wanna show you some things tonight that, 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 that can help you get there without going through a whole lot of unnecessary turns and twists in life. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you like to know how to get there without going through so many different turns and twists? Well, first of all, we know, and I, I, I know I've preached this here before, we know that all success and everything in life begins with decision making. So we know that we're on the course that we're on based on the decision that we made before we started that course. Is that right? Everybody has choices. Everybody does. Now there's one, there's a thing, there's several things involved in our choices, but one thing that's involved in our choices that I want to talk a little bit about tonight is attitude. Mm, it didn't get, it got quiet down, did it? Attitude. Attitude. There's good attitudes and there are bad attitudes and everybody's got an attitude. Everybody has some kind of an attitude. Huh? Now watch this. Your attitude has little to do with your circumstances, but it has everything to do with how you handle them. Wow. Your attitude has little to do with what's around you, but it has a lot to do with how you handle what's around you. Huh? So your attitude has little to do with your journey, but it has a lot to do with your destination. Uh, has a lot to do with your destiny. It's a common phrase that your attitude determines your altitude. And, and there's a whole lot of truth to that. Uh, uh, how many's ever run into someone with a bad attitude? Oh yeah. Oh. Matter of fact, they even make T-shirts that they'll they'll, they'll 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 billboard their attitude. I'm just an attitude looking for some place to happen. You know? Yeah. Okay. You're an attitude. And what makes our attitude that way? Cause cause of the twists and turns that we often take in life. 
the way some of us were raised, the way some of us were taught, yeah. things that was embedded in us. Yeah. You know, I think the last time I was here, I told you my stepdad, and I'm not a politician, but my and if and if, and if you're a Democrat, that's fine. I have nothing against that. God save Democrats too. <laughs> <laughs> But my stepdad is such a diehard Democrat that if a frog run, yeah. and he was a Democrat, he'd vote for that frog. <laughs> yes, sir, buddy. Because the Republicans are for the rich folk. Yeah. I don't, well, you know, whatever, but that's the way he is. His mind is set that way. See, we have mindsets, and those mindsets create attitudes. Yeah. For an example, if you're living in, a, in the city, and, 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 and we, may, we may say, oh, I'm not prejudiced, but I, 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 I've used this example a lot. If you saw a white man in the middle of the night carrying a TV set, you'd probably say, sir, can I help you get that to your house? Uh -huh. <laughs> I doubt. But if you saw a black man carrying a TV set, you'd call 911. <laughs> a lot of people would because that's the way we're, that's the way we're, we, a lot of us were raised. I remember one time we was gone, uh, uh, Julie and I was gone for, on revival, and we had a young black man that was staying with us. His name was John Jordan. John was about six foot six, and he, he talked, he had a speech impediment, and, and uh, he was watching our girls, well, and, and Michael. And, and, and when I got home, John Jordan told me, he said, Pastor Balak, he said, your mom, 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 mom called. And I said, okay. Uh, he said, she, 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 she sounded upset. I said, I'll call her. So I called her back and I said, mom, mom said, who was that that answered your phone? I said, that was John Jordan. She said, is he, is he black? I said, yeah, he's black. Well, you mean you left the house and left a black man there to watch your children? I said, well, yes, I did, Mama. Why? He'll rape your daughters and steal all your money? I said, why? Because he's black? Yeah! I said, Mama, white folk do that too. But we get set in our thinking. Understand? And then from there, we form an attitude. Ah. And once you have an attitude, mm, it is difficult to change that attitude, right? But I want you to know tonight that whatever your attitude is, whatever it is tonight, I want you to understand it's not it has little to do with the circumstances around you. Come on now. Little to do with it. But it has a lot to do with how long you stay in them. And a lot to do with how you handle them. Can you say amen? Oh, man, I've, I've learned that some stuff you just got to praise your way through. Yeah, you do. Have you ever noticed that? Some things you can't even pray your way through. You just got to praise your way through. That's right. Stuck right in the middle of hell, but you got to praise your way through. How can I have a bad attitude? because things are going bad. Get mad at God. Get mad at the church. Get mad at the pastor. Get mad at everybody else. Have an ulcer. Have a heart attack. And the rest of us are singing on our way to glory. And you're on your way to hell because you got a bad attitude. Amen. Come on. Amen. But then you shake yourself one day and say, wow, if I could just sing my way. What did Paul and Silas do at the midnight hour in the jail of Philippi? They sang their way through. At the midnight hour, they begin to sing praises of the God. And God sent an earthquake and made them free. Yeah. Attitude. 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 Attitude can change. Can change uh, 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 some circumstances, especially when that attitude changes you. Mm. In other words, yeah. in order to change your circumstance, you got to change you. Now, 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 what does that got to do with being successful? Success. Let me tell you something. Success is not about. It's not. It's not. It's not just about you. I don't want to get ahead of myself because in order for you to be successful, it's going to take more than you to get there. You're going to need some help. Yes. So you might as well make up your mind right now, I can't do this by myself. All right. So I'm going to need somebody to help me. Yeah. Huh? I'm going to need someone to help me through this. I'm going to need someone to, to help, me, help, help me get there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, going, I'm, going to need, I'm going to need some help. And you might as well understand that most of us, we got to admit that sometimes our attitude gets in our way. And we stay in that circumstance way too long. That's right. Yes. Huh? Because yeah. we got an attitude about our situation. Huh? huh? Now, I don't, am I the only one here that's ever got mad at God because of a situation? No. 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 Get upset with God? 
Huh? And, and, and why, God, why did you this, do this? And why did you do that? When God didn't even do it. And I'm not giving the devil any glory. But have you ever got mad at the devil? And the devil didn't even do it. You did it. Sometimes the devil ain't the one that does it. Sometimes we just flat do it. Brother Pat. We just do it. We get ourselves in those hot messes. And it keeps us from our destiny. That's a that's that little twist and that little turn that we take down through down through life's journey. Now watch this. Attitude also can improve. It can improve. But for it to improve, we have to improve. That's right. Amen. We have to change our heart. We have to change the way we look on things. We have to change the way we feel about things. We have to change the way we look at people. Now listen to me. If you're sitting here tonight and you're having a difficult time loving yourself. I want to share something with you. You're going to have a difficult time loving people. Amen. 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 If you can't get along with yourself, you're not going to get along with anybody else. Amen. And if you hate yourself, you're going to hate a whole lot of folk around you. Oh, yeah. huh? That's, oh, that's why when you like yourself, folk think you're cocky. Well, I'm just telling you what, I like myself. Because I have to live with myself when there ain't no one else around. That's right. That's right. Now, have you ever got in an argument with yourself? Sure. Yeah. Now, now, please, when you do that, don't do it in public. Because <laughs> the world will think you're nuts and the, and the church will think you're demon possessed. So, so you're, you're in a no win situation. <laughs> but I run across so many people in our society that's mad. They're mad. Yeah. Mad at Iraq, mad at George Bush because of Iraq and have no idea what's going on in Iraq. That's right. They don't. Hmm? Have no idea. Have no idea. Mad at George Bush. Now, now, what would you do if you was president? I'm going to tell you. Now, I got a hand on this the other day. I'm going to tell you what. I, I would never be president because I couldn't get elected. But I'm going to tell you something. Like that. <laughs> if I was president, the first thing I would do is when folks got to the age of retirement, I would not require them to pay taxes any longer. Amen. Amen. I'll vote for you. You vote for me? <laughs> Maybe I, maybe I could get something going on here. Yeah, you never know. It, isn't, it, isn't it amazing that you work all your life, pay for your home, then you then you retire and you're on a fixed income and you still got to pay taxes on your home? Huh? Because if you don't, they'll come and get it. And then if you get too sick, you end up in a nursing home. They'll get your stuff. There's something wrong with that picture. Amen. Because I don't think you ought, to have to, you ought to have to work all your life to get what you got and then lose it because you're too old to take care of it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> or your kids are too mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've done a many funerals where there's been a fight right there in the funeral home. That's right. Uh huh. I, I was called to do a few, I used to be on the, uh, on the funeral board for Wilson St. Pierre right there in Fountain Square in Indianapolis. And, and we had a young lady, they called me in one time to do her funeral. She was 20 years old, and she had hung herself. And they found her in the garage, and her five-month-old son was left in the house. Her mama found her uh, in the garage. And she had this huge old burn mark on her neck where, the, where it had hung her. And they called me in, Bob Pierre called me in and wanted to know if, Bob St. Pierre called me in and said, Mike, will you do the funeral? I said, sure, I'll, I'll be glad to do the funeral. Didn't know the family. Went in to do the funeral. And I sat and was talking to their mother. And I said, you know, is there anything you want me to do? She looked at me right in my eyes and said, make it as short as you can. Oh, yeah. Don't say any more than you have to. Well, I found out later on the reason she wanted that is because she was abusive to that girl. And she was blaming herself for her hanging herself. But the day of the funeral, people do, we do crazy stuff, man, when we're under stress. The day of the funeral, I, I, I arrived that morning and Bob St. Pierre came to me and said, Mike, come over here. He said, I got to talk to you, man. I got to tell you. I said, why? Well, it, it's sad, but it's funny. I said, why, 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 what went on? He said, you got to listen. The girl's name was Gloria. He said, Gloria's mother came to me today and said, uh, Mr. St. Pierre said, in the middle of the night, <coughs> Gloria must have moved because you can see that place on her neck now. And Bob St. Pierre looked at me and said, Mike, if Gloria moved, <laughs> I'm shutting down shop. I said, Bob, if Gloria moved, I ain't doing the funeral. <laughs> I ain't doing the funeral. You know what part of the problem was? Her guilt. Her guilt. 
And she was a woman that carried an attitude. You could tell she was mad at the world. But when I dug into it a few weeks later, I found out that her whole problem was she was mad at herself. She didn't think she did a good job as a parent. And she was an abusive person. And she would be, you know what? Thank God that there's a remedy for that. Amen? Thank God there's a man by the name of Jesus who shed some blood that can take care of that stuff. Amen? But that kind of thing will keep us from reaching our, our destiny. Yes, uh, an attitude is a powerful thing. It's powerful in being in a positive way, and it's powerful in a negative, negative way. way. Uh -huh. But every which road we decide to travel with it, it's very it is very powerful. Yeah. Very, very powerful. You 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 will have friends or run friends away based on your attitude. Right. Hmm? Ain't nobody wants to hang around the grouch all the time. No, no way. Come on. Smile. Everybody take a moment and smile. Yeah. Surely you got something to smile about. Yeah. I said, well, I can't think of nothing to go. I got to smile about. You're above ground, ain't you? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Still breathing. Yeah. Maybe tough, but you're still breathing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. You're in America, aren't you? Yeah. You're not in some third world country, are you? You're not over in Tibet being brutalized, are you? Oh, we got something to be thankful for. Hallelujah. We got something to smile about. No matter what kind of condition we're in, we got something to smile about. You didn't have to move to the land of opportunity. You were birthed in the land of opportunity. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Yeah. You could have been born anywhere. Sure. When God chose you to be born here for this purpose, for this season, hallelujah, you're blessed. If you ain't got two nickels to rub together, you're blessed by the fact you were born here. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't believe me, take some money, go on a mission trip. Yeah. Huh? And see how folk live. Huh? I was in 1997, I was in Africa. We were there for 13 days in, in, in the long way Malawi. We were there for 13 days training 125 church leaders. And, and, and I noticed something while I was in Africa. Women do 90% of the work. Yes. Amen. They do. They're up at 6 o'clock in the morning with stuff on top of their head. They come home at 6 o'clock evening with stuff on top of their head. And the men sit around and drink and smoke. Where's this place? <laughs> the long way Malawi. <laughs> you can get a one-way ticket for about $2,400. Huh? Of course, their delicacy there is mice. Well, they stand on the side of the road selling mice. They have it on the stick. You're on there like shish kebab. They sell it. They sell mice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to know when I got there. I want because they speak Swahili. And I want to know. The first thing I ask is, how do I say no in Swahili? Somebody said, well, how come you want to, want, want to know how to say no? Because when someone offers me a mouse, I want to know what to say. I want to say the right word. I ain't eat no mouse. No, 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 seriously, seriously, they get them, they gut them, they put them on a stick and they roast them like you and I do hot dogs. And then they chase them with roasted caterpillars. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Still want to go? No. Oh, they don't even know what McDonald's is. There wasn't no McDonald's where I was at. No, no, no. And I learned real quick, the first meal I had there, I ate chicken. And and, and, and my interpreter told me, Dr. Baldock, don't eat the chicken. And I'm like, what? There ain't nothing wrong with chicken. And, and and I got a chicken leg, and it's about the size of my thumb. The chicken leg was. I'm serious, about the size of my thumb. And, and the meat was so tough, you couldn't hardly get it off the bone. I nearly broke a tooth trying to get it off the bone. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm going to eat fish and rice. I ate fish and rice the rest of the time I was there. And, I, and, and, and when I got back to America, the first thing I did is I got me a good old piece of chicken breast, baby. <laughs> Woo! We're blessed. Yes. We murmur and grumble and complain, yet we're blessed. Yes. Aren't we? Sure. Aren't we? Yes. All right. Yes. Now, a positive attitude brings positive results. So if we're going to travel this road, and if it's going to be one of success, we got to travel with a positive attitude. Now, 
I want to show you something because on your way and on your traveling as being a Christian, you're going to attract some folks. First of all, number one, you're going to attract some haters. There are some people that are not going to be glad for you when you're blessed. Amen. Amen. Huh? Some folk not going to be glad for you because you're blessed. I have seen some folk get flat mad when you share a testimony of blessing. Amen. That's true. I'm not talking about people outside the church. I'm talking about people in the church. Huh? Not everybody will celebrate you. And some folk won't even tolerate you. Huh? Because you will attract haters. Now, if you don't believe me, read the story of Joseph. <laughs> when Joseph had a dream pastor he attracted haters and they were detractors they were trying to keep him from accomplishing his dream they called him the dreamer oh the dreamer what do you do with the dreamer throw him in a pit just throw him in a pit we've got a CD call from the pit to the palace and that's what it talks about he was thrown in a pit I like Joseph's attitude at the end of everything though Joseph went from the pit to the palace, from the palace to jail, and back to the palace. Amen. Amen. But at the end of all of it, Joseph said, what you meant for bad, what you meant for evil, God has meant for good. God put me through all of that and took me through all of that so I could be where I'm at, so I could be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. He praised his way through. You're going to attract haters. Amen. Amen. You're going to attract, and those haters will make fun of you. Why are you going to church over there for? Because I love it over there, man. Amen. I sat there thinking a while ago, I need to take up guitar lessons. <laughs> I've always wanted to play one or take it up now. Man, I'd fit right in. <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. You and Charlie are about a toss-up when it comes to that lead stuff. I'm telling you what, he can burn that thing up, can't he? Yeah. We're just falling uh, around a little bit tonight. I know. <laughs> can you can burn it up. But see, but you, what you know is bad, most of us don't even know. That's right. <laughs> most, of, most of us don't even know it's bad. Now, I picked up a couple things y'all did up here, and I just got tickled. But that's all right. <laughs> that's all. You're going to attract haters. 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 It may even be in your family. Amen. Amen. But watch out. Now, if you're in the ministry here tonight and you're a preacher, watch out. Watch out. Sure. Not all preachers are going to celebrate you. That's for sure. Amen. That's right. There is a jealousy that flows through the ministry. Oh, and they don't like it when you get to the top, especially I'm always leery when I stand at the door and someone tells me, oh, you're you're the best preacher I ever heard. And the pastor standing on the other side and said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> someone did that to me the other day and looked out of the corner of their eye and saw their pastor standing there uh, they said, man, you are my favorite preacher. And they saw their pastor, except for my pastor. Now he's the best. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you suck up. What's, you just, you, you, you scaredy cat, man. You, you afraid. You afraid. You afraid. But you're going to attract ho uh, haters. Number two, on your journey, you're going to attract what I call hobos. Those are people who want to ride your yes. coattail and they want to take everything from you. Yes. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. Have you ever noticed that a hobo don't have nothing but wants everything? Yes. Uh -huh. Ain't got nothing, uh -huh. but they want everything. Yes. I call them VDPs, very draining people. <laughs> have you ever run into very draining people? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. People who will drain you of joy, yeah. drain you of strength. You start off having a good day till you run into somebody and you've got the help of them, and by the time the day was over, by God, you were drained. Huh? Have you ever helped somebody one time and then the phone just keeps ringing and just keeps ringing and just keeps ringing and then finally you throw up your hands and call AT&T or Bell South or whoever and say, give me caller ID. i got to check my numbers before I answer the phone anymore. And if it comes up private, let the answer machine get it because you never know because they are draining me. Huh? Draining me. Draining me. Some of you, I got y'all hold on your seat. Some of you have allowed your children to do that to you. Oh yeah. They've drained you of your money. Of your sanity. Mine ain't either. I, here's what I tell parents like this. Listen, listen. All my children are drunk. 
Now, Michael lives the closest to me, but I still don't get involved in his business. I don't get involved in my kid's business. Because I found out this. What I don't know, I ain't got to worry about. That's right. That's right. And I'm, I'm smart enough to know I've got good kids, but I'm smart enough to know they don't all good, do good stuff. Amen. I don't agree with that. So there ain't no need of me knowing all the bad stuff they do. Because I want to lay down and sleep at night. I'm too old to sit up and worry. I hear you. Now, I did that thing when they dated setting up. I didn't do it with Michael, but I did it with the girl. How come we don't sit up and wait for the boys? We always sit up and wait for the girl. I don't know. We're waiting to see if they come in and their neck look like they just got done working at the muffler shop. <laughs> I want to know who owns that muffler shop you've just been working at. <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm over that sitting up waiting on my children. Now, I want to tell you something else. When I pastored, I used to grieve myself at night. Yeah. Until I found out those folks are going to do what those folks are going to do. Ain't no need of me grieving myself over. Ain't no need of me grieving myself into a heart attack. Ain't no need of me getting into a frenzy. They're going to do what they're going to do. So I might as well do what I'm called to do and let the chips fall where they may and let God take care of the rest. I'm on a journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you're going to run into hobos. If you don't want to call them a hobo, you can call them takers. Yeah. Takers. Takers. Now there's... I don't know if I'll do this next one or not. Go ahead. Speak the truth. Go ahead. You know, Michael knows what it is. Michael said, go ahead and do it, Dad. Yeah. You want to do this part and you're preaching. Oh, okay. <laughs> the next thing you're going to run into is what I call hoes. Uh -oh. Now, I'm not talking about a garden tool here. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Whoa. He was doing good. Now, if I, was in a black, <laughs> if I was in a black church, they'd know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, talking now, about. Now, now, you're going to say, where do you get scripture for that? Okay. Read about Joseph. That's right. Oh, yeah. And he ran into Potiphar's wife. Yeah. And every day she enticed him. Yeah. You can call her what you want to call her, but she was a hoax. Amen. Amen. And Medea said, you can't make a housewife out of a hoe. Now, I know I ain't the only one in this house that watched Medea. We just watched that. You just watched it. A couple weeks ago, we See? She invited us. I'm telling the truth, man. Medea, Medea said it. The gospel according to Medea. That's right. But now watch this. And I'm not trying to be vulgar. I'm not trying to be vulgar. I'm trying to make a point. She was there trying to entice Joseph. <laughs> Wasn't she? Yes. I always tell everybody, when you run into somebody like that and they entice you, it, run, run, run like Joseph did, but, but, but do something Joseph didn't do. Take your coat with you. <laughs> Joseph let his coat behind. And then she cried. And then he got thrown in jail. For something he didn't do. Do you realize there's enticers in this world? They come in all shapes and sizes and colors. They're demonic spirits trying to entice you to get you off track so your journey is not successful. Uh, right. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We didn't get to that one too bad. The last one is good though. The last one is good. On your journey, you're going to find helpers. Thank you, Believe it or not, there are some people that want to help you. Thank God. Now, a good helper, a true helper, will tell you the truth. Yes. That's right. Please don't ever get mad at someone who tells you the truth. Uh -huh. yep. That's right. If they've got enough, if they've got enough backbone to tell you you need a mint, then just get a mint. Don't get mad. <laughs> I mean, if you ever talk to somebody you want so bad to tell them, here, 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 here. And if, I was at a church here a while back, and this guy came up talking to me, and I was standing like this, and I had nowhere to go, and I'm like this, and he right in my face, I'm about to die. The spirit of halitosis was everywhere. I'm like this. And I'm thinking, man, and I reached in my pocket, and I didn't have no mints in my pocket, and I'm thinking, Lord Jesus, do something with him. Cause him to die or something. Somebody just come, get him, it's off. Now, you know when you run into something like that, it's hard to tell somebody. You know? Yeah. We pastored a church in, in, in a little town called, called uh, New Haven, Illinois. 
And we had a lady in the church. She used to do a lot of singing in the church. Sweet lady, sweet, sweet lady. Had a good spirit about it. But I, I get so tickled at her because she'd wear bright red lipstick. But when she come to church, everybody called her Aunt Lou. Remember Aunt Lou, Michael? Everybody called her Aunt Lou. Michael can tell you, every time Aunt Lou would smile, she had as much red lipstick on her teeth as she did on her lips. But no one had enough nerve to say, Aunt Lou, you got lipstick on your teeth. I told her one time, I said, Aunt Lou, you got lipstick on your teeth. Oh, it's all right. I'm like, no, it ain't. We got to look at it. You don't have to look at it. But a real friend will tell you the truth. Amen. 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 A real friend will not hide things from you. They'll tell you the truth. Right. You may not like the truth. Amen. But it's the truth that will make you free now. Amen. We need the truth. Hallelujah. We don't need somebody lying to us. We don't need somebody sugarcoating it. We don't need somebody chocolating that thing up. We need somebody that will stand up and tell us the truth. It, 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 it may make us mad, but you know there's a thing going on in the ministry. Brother Pat, he, I know he'll verify this. There's a spirit going on in the ministry right now where a lot of preachers are afraid to tell you the truth. That's right. We've become motivational speakers. Oh God. Yeah, that is true. Oh God. We quit preaching. Up. Matter of fact, right now in several states, they're, they're they are trying to outlaw yeah. preachers even mentioning homosexuality or lesbianism in the pulpit. That's right. Because we'll be offensive. Well, if you're that and that offends you, get saved. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all see that they had on Oprah Winfrey here the other day, and that uh, been thinking of that, that that supposedly man having a baby. Oh gosh. Now what is that all about? That's dumber than a box of rocks. That dude was born a woman, and he should have stayed one. People want to be something that they're not. And I ain't never wanted to be no woman. I had no desire. I like women too well to want to be a woman. <laughs> I, 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 I don't understand our world. I don't understand our world. Crazy world. Crazy world. But you are going to have helpers. You're going to have people that will tell you the truth. And you're going to have people that will help you help you up when you're down. Anybody here ever been down and couldn't find anybody to help you up? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. And isn't it sad when you're down and the church won't even help you up? Yeah. yeah. Talk about sure it. Sure is. My, my son will tell you, we preach in small churches and we preach in large churches, but my son will tell you that the smaller churches take better care of us when we preach at them than the larger churches do. Amen. That's right. That's the truth. And is it, it's not that the truth, Michael. That is the truth. That's the truth. I, 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 I've got some now that I don't even like to go in on. I don't very much anymore, but I just I got I can't I can't handle all that program stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. I like the way y'all do it here. Just yeah. let the spirit of the Lord do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. We ain't got to sit time to pray for you just when we feel the need. Amen. Yeah. There you go. We'll sing whatever. We'll laugh if we want to laugh. We'll jump if we want to jump. Hallelujah. Amen. You get offended, just jump with us. Glory to God. It'll be all right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I like that. Amen. I like that good down home feeling, don't you? I like that family atmosphere, don't you? Amen. When you're around folk like that, you can be truthful. Because you don't have to hide anything. And we can help one another. The Bible says when we that are strong see someone who is weak, help them. Lest we be overtaken with the same infirmity. We need one another. Amen. But, but listen to me. And it may not seem like it, but there are people. There are people out there who want to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now I used to be this way. Oh no, 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 that's all right. People would ask, "You need any help?" No, 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 no. That's all right. That's all right. Back when I first started preaching, a lot of the ways that you got paid was we called them Pentecostal handshakes. Yeah. You remember those, brother Pat? Oh, yeah. A lot of times you didn't get an offering, but people would shake yeah. their hand, put yeah. something in it, and, and man, if it cut your hand, you knew it was something good because it was. <laughs> If you couldn't close your fist. If you couldn't close your fist. Yeah. It's like, whoo, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I was preaching at a church one time, and uh, and and I I'm not exaggerating. Through the service, through the service, without without exaggerating, 
the pastor mentioned at least 12 times, pray that God will send revival. And, and I'm scheduled to preach that night. I'm thinking, okay. I get up to preach that night, and man, the power of God fell in that place. I don't know how many people got saved that night. We had people that got healed that night. I mean, we just had an outbreak of the Spirit of God. And in his closing prayer, the last thing he said was, pray that God sends revival. I'm sitting there thinking, duh. We're here. It's here. He shook my hand and put some money in it. I didn't look at it. I, I, I waited until I went outside. I used to have a man travel with me that sang it. And I got outside and I said, I just wonder how much money he gave. I'm not going to tell you the preacher because you all might know him. But, uh, but, I, but, but I reached in my pocket and it was a $5 bill. I looked at the guy singing with me and I said, I've got a half of mine to take this back into him and tell him, you need it worse than I do. That ain't helping. No. When you see a need and you know you have an opportunity to help meet that need and you don't help, it, help meet that need, you're not a helper. That's right. Whether it's physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, whatever. If you have a way to meet that need. Huh? Do you know right now the one thing that we're lacking in our society are good caregivers? Yes. 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 Good caregivers. I, I, I've listened to you. You work at a nursing home? Yes. Right? I, and and well, you can tell, you, there's good workers at nursing homes are few and far between. First of all, they're underpaid. <laughs> Secondly, they're understaffed. Yeah, that's all Come on now. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. You're telling the truth. Yeah. They're understanding. Yeah. Huh? And if the family don't come in and check on them all the time, they may lay there without care. Yeah, yeah. 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 Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Now that that's no, I'm not slamming anybody. I'm just telling you our society needs some caregivers. Oh, but watch this. What would happen if we had caregivers in the church? Yeah. Oh. They care to give. Uh -huh. ah, yeah. I give because I'm taking care of you. I, what, 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 what do you need me to do? I'll take care of you. When you're down, I'll help pick you up. Yeah. If you're weak, I'll help be your strength. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm here. Glory to God. And have you ever had someone tell you, oh, if you ever need me, just call me. Yeah. Yeah. And you call them, and they're busy. <laughs> they got their caller ID. They, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You are exactly right. Yeah. Ain't answering that phone. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know about you, but I was bogged down in sin and I needed a helper. Amen. Yes, sir. I couldn't get out of what I was in. No. Mm. Uh, I said I couldn't get out of what I was in. I owed a debt that I could not pay, but thank God there was someone who did not owe the debt, but paid it for me and got me out. <laughs> got me out of the mighty clay. Set my feet upon the rock to stay. Hallelujah. He's a helper. Amen. And then he told the disciples, when I go away, I'm not going to leave you without a helper. That's right. Amen. Pray the Father, and he'll send the Holy Ghost. He'll help you. I got to, I got in the house last night at my in-laws, and I looked at Michael, and I said, oh my God, I've lost my glasses. And I only wear these because my other one's broke, and I've been too cheap to go buy a new pair of glasses. I wanted to break down to I said, Oh man, Michael, my, my glasses are, I can't find them. He said, uh, uh, Are they in the car? I said, No, I don't think so. I said, Man, I don't know where they're at. I said, Man, I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to have to go to Walmart and get some of them reading glasses. Well, I can't read without these things. Somebody said, How come God ain't healed you? Well, He did. He gave me some glasses. <laughs> Made a way for me to see. And I said, Oh man, oh man. So I got up this morning and, and I thought, I thought, Well, uh, uh, I had promised my father-in-law and mother-in-law that I'd go to church with him this morning and I was tired and give out and so just as I was getting ready to leave the house my mother-in-law called and said Mike are you up? I said yeah I'm up she said well uh, can you preach this morning? I said what? she said yeah Ken won't know if you could preach this morning I'm like gee well, yeah, I really want to sleep in I said yeah I can she said well I don't know for sure see I like this I don't know for sure but just be ready I'm like yeah so I'm thinking, man, how am I going to read? So I got the print. I said, Holy Ghost, you know exactly where that glass is. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's a fact. And I'm telling you, I walked right outside, and, and there they were laying. The Holy Ghost took me right to where they were laying. Jesus. He's a helper. Amen. I got to church this morning, and sure enough, Ken called me down to his office and said, Michael, you preached for me this morning. 
Man, and I didn't feel, I didn't want to. I really didn't. I didn't feel, I, I, I'm like, you know. He said, I'll take care of you. Well, I, I perked up a little bit then. No, 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 no. I said, no, brother, I don't worry about that. I said, so, so, but the Holy Ghost helped me. Have you ever lost something and asked the Holy Ghost yes, to take you right to yeah. Absolutely. He's a helper. Many times. He's a helper. You know, you, you know, you put that one thing up that you don't want to lose and you put it in a special place because you don't want to lose it. Then you forget about the special place. Am I the only one here never done that? I put my cell phone in a special place. Here about two months ago and I still ain't found it. We've called and still can't hear it ring. So I just said, I told him, Michael's a little boy, I said, uh, uh, Cameron probably took it and hid it somewhere. And I know good and well I put it up someplace thinking, I'm going to put it here so it don't get lost. And I couldn't find that booger nowhere. And the Holy Ghost won't show me where it's at. Maybe he wants me to stay off the phone. I don't know. <laughs> but we got a helper. Aren't you glad we got a helper? Thank God. Yes. And aren't you glad, see, a, a, a pastor is not only just a pastor, they're also a helper. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Aren't you glad that the brothers and sisters you're sitting next to in the church, they're not just brothers and sisters, they're helpers. Yes. Yes. Right. We're a family. Yeah. Huh? We're a family. We may have come from different bloodlines, but we're a family. Yeah. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad of that? Yeah. We can count on one another. Sure. Let me tell you something. Uh, the, the, the church has been my family for 38 years. Uh -huh. I'm rarely around... Well, I don't have that. I'm getting so old. I don't have hardly any aunts and uncles left. But, but uh, I got a thing the other day. You know, you, man, folk dying all over the place. I'm thinking that's because you're getting old. When you get old, folks die. <laughs> and you. So now, I'm, now I'm trying to gauge this thing. I look at the obituaries and see how old everybody is. Yeah, so, do I. so as long as I see them in their 80s and stuff, I'm saying you're all right, man. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I but then I read one. I read one about sixty-two. I'm thinking, oh Jesus, that's good. That's too close to the home. Now. You know what I'm saying? You know the devil play with you. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but ain't no one wants to go tonight. Yep. Huh? Everybody wants to die. Ain't, ain't no one will go by themselves either. Let's just wait till the rapture takes place and go in the big load. That'd be all right. That'd be all right. But your success is going to be uh, based on recognizing your helpers. And I'll, and now watch this, because this is going to be tough. And allow them to help you. Yes. Because back when I was telling you about the story about the, the handshakes, I, 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 I got to the place where I was, I'd say, oh, brother, you don't have to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to do that. And my old pastor caught me doing that one time. He said, boy, next time I hear you telling someone they don't have to do that, I'm going to smack you. Uh, I, I said, well, I don't want no one just to give me something. <coughs> he said, you don't understand. You're depriving them of being blessed. That's right. That's right. And he said, son, you know what your problem is? I said, no, sir. He said, pride. That's it. That's it. Oh, God. It's just pride. Oh, God. Yes. Now, I didn't like what he said to me, but it was the truth. And I had to swallow my pride. Hmm? Yes. And realize, you know what? It's, but see, I was raised that you've got to do it on your own. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We didn't we didn't get any handouts at home. Uh -huh. huh? And I didn't understand it. I, my mom would always say, if you work for it, you sweat for it, you bleed for it, you'll appreciate it. I said, Mom, I appreciate it. You just give it to me. I'll, I'll take care of it. I promise you I'll take care of it. Mom said, that's a good idea, but it ain't going to work that way. You're going to have to work for this thing. Huh? You're going to have to work for this thing. First car I got, no one bought it for me. I had to pay for it myself. Huh? No one taught me to drive. I taught myself. On the streets mm. of internet. Just, boy, that was scary. <laughs> we had we had to work for everything. So I grew up with the mentality that nobody's going to give you anything and don't expect it from anybody. Try. Try. Huh? And then when I was... 13 years old, 13 to 14 years old, I found out how how un irresponsible people were. I, I carried a paper route in, in Indianapolis back when they had the, they, they didn't just have the star, they had the news that came out in the evening. And I had a paper route carrying the, carrying the news. And you'd be surprised at how many people would not pay their paper bill. they get mad at you if the paper got wet. they get mad at you if your paper went in a certain place. But when you come and collect, they ain't going to pay you nothing. Now I gotta dig up some money and I gotta because I have to pay the bill. Pay the bill, I try. And I learned, I learned at an early age, there are some folks in this world that want stuff for nothing. 
Yes, sir. And I wasn't raised that way. But then, because I was raised that way, it was difficult for me to receive something from somebody. Especially when they gave it to you without strings attached. It's one thing for someone to help you, but it's another thing for somebody to help you with strings attached. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And then they'll come around a few months later and remind you. Yeah. Remember what I did for you? Yeah. Now lie for me in court. Yeah, the devil is a lie. Yeah. Huh? Helpers. You gotta you you must you must you must recognize your helper. And you're right, it does, it hurts. You, you must recognize your helpers. You you it, it's it's imperative that you recognize your helpers. The other thing that you got to do is it, it is on your journey. Mm, make sure you keep yourself in a position where God can bless you. Amen. Uh, I may have given this definition before here, but I, I don't believe in luck. But for but for the sake of that, let me give you a definition of luck. The definition of luck is when preparation and opportunity meet. Come together. That's right. Amen. So lucky people are those who are prepared for an opportunity. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Now I've often wondered how many opportunities has come our way and we were not prepared for them and we missed out on that opportunity because we were in the wrong position. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Zacchaeus. Remember little Zacchaeus? Sure. That wee little man? When he got there, he couldn't see Jesus. But there was a place he could get to see him. He climbed up in the sycamore tree. Huh? Remember? And he got up there and Jesus recognized him. Huh? What did he do? He pre he prepared himself for an opportunity. Now, if he had stayed hid in the crowd, it may have had a different outcome. But he positioned himself so Jesus could see him. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come on down out of that tree, boy. I'm going to your house. Salvation has come to you and your household. Hallelujah. Why? He positioned himself for an opportunity. Opportunities come for those who position themselves right. Opportunities come for those who are looking for them. Who are preparing for them. Amen. Huh? See, you need to be preparing now for what God wants to do for you tomorrow. Amen. Hmm? Quit letting your yester your yesterdays live in today. Oh God. Because if your past is still in your present, you have no future. That's right. That's right. That's right. Did you hear me? If your past is still involved in your present, you have no future. That's true. Amen. Yeah. You need to let go of your past. Let go of your past hurts, your past aches, your past pains, even your past successes. You need to let go of them. Your past failures, let go of them. Let go. You can't do nothing about it. Right. You can't do nothing about what you did yesterday. You can't change yesterday. But you can make a difference in the moments that are ahead of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So 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 don't be burdened down by your yesterdays. Mm. Beating yourself up because you blow you blew it. Made a bad decision. You're beating yourself up. Huh? Come on. Married the wrong person? What? Just had to have it. Mama told you. But no. No, you was in love. He's had to have it. He's so pretty. He's so, He's so pretty. Yeah. I tell young girls, I say, listen, here's the way it works, and you got to watch this. Because this is, this is the way it works. I liked him. I loved him. I let him. And I lost him. In that order. I liked him. I loved him. I let him. I lost him. And sometimes, good people hook up with wrong people. That's why God gave Moses a bill of divorcement. Huh? And some people stay in misery all their lives for the sake of the children. Hate one another. Yep. But I'm going to tell you something. I think all that bickering and fighting and complaining in front of the kids is as hard on them as the divorce is. Absolutely. Sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do and just, just get forgiveness and go on about your life. Because sometimes we made a bad choice. Bad choice. Amen. It's true. Now, and now, if I was doing a seminar, I could teach on that, but it's a truth in him. Sometimes we just make, we just make that. So we've done, we not only in marriages, we do that sometimes on our jobs. We take a job for the sake of a job and hate every day of it. And you go in and you're miserable. 
Been there, done mm -hmm. that. Hate every day of it. Well, what's wrong? You're probably in the wrong place. Huh? And you're beating yourself up. Huh? I mean, hey, have you ever beat yourself up over decisions you made years ago and you're still beating yourself up over? Man, if I'd have just done... Well, yeah. Sometimes she beat you up. It's <laughs> <laughs> a brave man right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if that, well, you know what? If the dog hadn't stopped in the middle of the road to take care of business, he'd still be here. <laughs> so you. So you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can't live on what ifs. No. Huh? No. What if? What if? What if? What if? What if? What if? Well, what if not? I mean, what ifs has a what if not, doesn't it? So you can't live that way. God wants you to live a life that's full of success. He wants you to reach your journey and uh, your destiny, and He wants you to have a good journey on your way to your destiny. He wants you to be as healthy as possible. He wants you to have a sound mind. Amen. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have peace. Glory to God. He wants you to have stuff. It's His good pleasure to give His children good things and good gifts. He's not withholding any good things from us. He wants us to be successful. Thank you, Successful. And, and the measure of success is the success is measured by you becoming what God wants you to become. That's right. That's it. Not what everybody else is expecting out of you. That's right. When I started preaching, my stepdad used to say, When are you going to get a real job? Yeah. Yeah. He'd tell me that all the time. I'd go to the house and he'd say, Mike, when are you going to get a real job? <laughs> he, he's, he, uh, he worked at Chrysler for years and years and years and Retired from Chrysler. Matter of fact, I know for about 15 years he worked two jobs. He worked at Chrysler and he worked at Standard Grocery. We lived in a little uh, area called Woodbury out on Highway 67 between McCordsville and Fortville. And he'd drive all the way into Indianapolis and work those jobs. And he'd always say, When are you going to get a real job? I said, Dad, I got a real job. Ah, that ain't working. You don't get your hands dirty. I said, Well, I do. Sometimes I got to wipe the dust off my books and stuff. <laughs> Look at you, your hands are soft. Well, I ain't seen no need to get them catalyst. I mean, you need a real job. Just cause I I'd say, you know what, Dad, just cause you come home smelling like grease and oil and and you, you got so much oil in your hair that if you fall down you'd skid for about six blocks. <laughs> that don't mean I got to do that. Well, then mom and dad moved to Florida and they got involved in the church that my sister and her husband pastored. And my brother-in-law, my dad's stepdad was just really close. To, he's still really close to my brother-in-law. Him and Jim, man, they get together. They're just, whew, you know, and, and, and Jim was just it. He was the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know. And, and uh, of course, he got along with my sister really well. He didn't get along with me, no. He couldn't get along with me because I wouldn't let him get along with me <laughs> growing up. I didn't want him to get along with me. Okay? Attitude. Attitude. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I went down to visit them one, one summer, and we're all sitting out in the yard, and my stepdad looks at me and he said, Well, being down here working with Jim and Teresa, I found out, man, pastoring's hard work. Yeah, think about that. I said, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I found out you've been working hard for a number of years. I'm like, I, I wanted to say, I tried to tell you, old man. But if I'd have done that, my mama would have slapped me silly. <laughs> hard work. Hard work. I'm on a journey. Yeah. And, I'm, I, I, and, 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 and I'm not measuring my journey about how much money I got in the bank because it don't mean nothing to no. me. Amen. You got, the only reason that I got to have money is because you got to have money to live. That's the only reason. Right. Yeah. Huh? If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't care if I never had no money. True. Huh? But you can't go nowhere without money. You can't do nothing without money. No. I mean, it takes uh, it just it takes money. Huh? Right. Uh, uh, someone said, "Well, one of, uh, Julie and I was in Amish country here just the other day." And Julie said, "I wonder how they, I wonder how they get all their land. And they don't have to pay taxes on." It. I said, "I don't know. You want to change to the Amish religion and find out?" <laughs> 
but I'm spoiled. I like electric lights. <laughs> I'm spoiled. I like I like gas powered engines. I don't want to clean up horse apples on my way to the store. <laughs> I, I, huh? Pooper scooper. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, yeah. Side of the huh? yeah, he could be my pooper scooper. Tonight. Michael said, No, I think I'd resign, Dad. I'd do something else. I would blame him. I'd say, Yeah, you better go somewhere. Son. Now, I want you to understand tonight. We've had a good time, but I want you to understand God wants you to be successful. Yes. So if you're living below your privileges, it's now time to rise up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And let God bless you the way He wants to bless you. It's time to quit doing with that. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something. If I get back on the political note, it ain't got nothing to do with that a Republican. It ain't got nothing to do about a Democrat. It ain't got nothing to do about a Libertarian. It's got to do with God. That's right. That's right. Buddha can't get you there. No. Hare Krishna can't get you there. No. Mohammed can't get you there. Uh, Mormonism can't get you there. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And He, and He only can set you on the path and a journey to your God-given destiny and arrive with the soundness of mind. Amen. 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 Ain't no need of you dying and your mind being all tore up. That's right. Amen. Matter of fact, medical science have proven that people who keep their mind active, very, very, a very small percentage of them ever get afflicted with Alzheimer's. Those who challenge their minds all the time. Crossword puzzles. Crossword puzzles. Absolutely. Get that. Uh, what do they call that other thing you do with the numbers? Sudoku. Sister, what to do that? My wife's got one of them books. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. That gives me a head. I thought, Lord Jesus, just look at the back and fill it in. I need words. That's almost bad as trying to work a Rubik's Cube. You ever run a Rubik's Cube? Yeah. Yeah. You did one, didn't you? A Rubik's Cube. You never did get one done? Oh, I thought you did. I, I bought a book, couldn't understand the book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to teach you how to do it. I'm supposed to teach you how to well, do it. the Rubik's Cube, you yeah. I bought a book, show you how to do it. I still could, man. Could I still well, that's what I did with the computer. I got a book for computers for idiots. I didn't understand the book either. Oh, I should have got the one for dummies. Well, I got the one for idiots. Listen, listen. We've had a good time tonight. But I wanted to do it this way because I want you to know that laughter doeth good like a medicine. Yes. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. And listen, no matter what you're going through, it ain't that bad. No. no. no, it ain't. no. Someone else is going through something yeah. far worse. Yeah. 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 Amen. That's right. And aren't you glad and aren't you thankful that you're in as good a condition as you're in right now? You ought to stand here God and have the praise in the house tonight. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Bravo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, me. We're going to have an awesome time this week. You can be seated Amen. for a moment. We're going to have an awesome time this week. But I won't, I don't want to leave. I know we've already prayed for some people, but if you're if you're still in a place to where you're you need prayer for anything or for any reason, I want you to I want to give you an opportunity to come and we'll pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. And if you're here. And your relationship with Jesus Christ is not the best. Maybe it's a little rocky. And you know beyond any doubt that you're not where you're supposed to be. I won't give you an opportunity to make it all right with the Lord. Don't leave here tonight second guessing whether you're going to make it or not. Leave here tonight knowing beyond a doubt I'm going to make it. 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 Let's just surprise a whole lot of folks. Let's show up there. Because there's some folks bet that you don't make it. Amen. Those are some of the first ones I'm going to see. I made it. I made it. Can you make it? Let's worship the Lord for a moment. Go ahead.